is this guy making another video about batteries? The answer to that question and more after this. Logan and the Hubbo. Hey, I'm Mike from the Logan and the Hobo RV Adventure Channel. Today I'd like to talk about my RV uh, off-grid electrical setup. Um, I consider it a budget, uh, fairly cheap way to get a good, high-quality, off-the-grid electrical system that's going to allow you to camp for multiple days uh, when you're not connected to any power. So I say my system is a budget system, uh, cost effective, and of course that's a subjective term. It depends on what kind of money you're looking at spending, what kind of camping you're looking at doing, how much comfort and amenities you want to have. Uh, it depends on a lot of things. I consider uh, mine a budget setup compared to what it can be. I've heard of uh, off-grid electrical, electrical systems upwards of $10,000 when you factor in lithium batteries and solar panels and things of that nature. Um, so uh, on the spectrum of if $10,000 is a lot of money, then my off-grid system is not very much money at all. So let's talk cost, and I'm just kind of going off of my memory here. And so uh, I have two six-volt golf cart batteries, each cost about $120, and they're 232 amp hours each. Uh, my small inverter costs $50, uh, not very expensive at all. My battery monitor costs $150, and uh, the generator costs $1,000. And so I can't do all that math in my head, but I'll probably put it on the screen. I think it's a good idea to upgrade your battery uh, setup if you're going to be doing any kind of off-grid camping for any uh, length of time at all because what typically typically comes with a RV or a trailer is just one single 12 volt they call it a deep cycle battery but it's usually uh, known as a marine hybrid deep cycle battery which means it has uh, cold cranking amps to start an engine like a boat engine and then it also has some deep cycle capacity and so it kind of does good at both of those things but it doesn't excel in any one of those areas with a trailer uh, especially you don't need a battery with any cold cranking amps you just need a pure deep cycle battery and so the way you tell uh, the difference between a hybrid uh, deep cycle battery and a true deep cycle battery is a true deep cycle battery is not going to have cold cranking amps listed on it it's just going to have amp hours listed on it, so it can be an amp hour rating. Uh, just real briefly on amp hours, that's the unit of measurements that's used to tell you how much a battery can store and then how much energy that battery can then release for you to use. The way the six volt batteries work when you put them together, you connect them in what's known as series and that doubles the voltage, so it's a 12 volt output, so it works with a 12 volt RV system and then the amp hours stay the same. Uh, conversely, if you had two 12 volt batteries, then you would connect those in parallel and it would keep the voltage at 12 volts and it would double the amount of amp hours uh, that you could have with those. Okay, so I made other videos on how to maintain your batteries. I'll put a link in the description and another video on uh, battery monitor systems, why that's important, kind of some pros and cons to different kind of systems, and then specifically about my battery monitor system, which is the uh, Victron BMB 700. And so I won't go into great detail on that. I'll put a, like I said, I'll put a link in the description. But it's important to have an uh, accurate ba battery monitor to tell you the state of charge of your batteries, uh, how much power is coming out, and if you're charging, how much power is coming in. That way you know what's happening with your batteries and you don't damage them and you know uh, how long you, you can uh, camp before your batteries run out. Okay, so another key component to my off-grid system is the inverter. What the inverter does is it takes the 12 volt DC or direct current power from the batteries uh, that provides the 
the, the power to your trailer when you're not plugged into shore power. It takes that power and it converts it to 110, 120, like household type power uh, that will power uh, things that you would plug into a normal house outlet. Like, uh, for example, in my case, I use it for my TV and my Apple TV because uh, I'll be honest, I like to watch TV when I'm camping and my kids for darn sure like to watch TV when they're camping. And so originally I was gonna spend a lot of money for a big inverter, um, but as I was researching it and how to wire it in and what I actually needed an inverter for, I realized that I only needed a small inverter because the thing I really only need to power off of the uh, 110, 120 volt system or that the, the house power system is the TV and the Apple TV. Uh, I'd also like to power the coffee maker but that's not a deal breaker and the, the coffee maker draws an enormous amount of watts uh, 1400 watts or something like that so i'd have to get a 2000 watt inverter for that which is kind of expensive and it draws a lot of power itself and so what i ended up doing is i got a small inverter uh, okay sorry i had a little bit of technical difficulty there uh, but what i wanted to say is i got a pure sine wave inverter and the pure sine wave looks like this okay pure sine wave produces an electrical signature that's nice and smooth like this versus uh, what's known as a modified sine wave which is more kind of like squared off and so with any kind of high-end electronics especially like laptops or phones if you're gonna be plugging that kind of stuff in or a expensive TV which mine isn't but I didn't want to take the chance you want to use the pure sine wave power uh, or else you risk damaging that equipment and so the inverter I got is uh, very simple it's only 300 watts plenty of plenty of power to power the uh, the TV and the Apple TV so I can stream uh, you know, YouTube and whatnot, uh, 300 watt inverter, and I don't have to wire it in. All I did was I plugged it into, there's a 12 volt outlet by uh, the jacks for the TV, and I ordered the inverter. It's supposed to go in a car, and so it's got the 12 volt plug in it, and so you just plug the, the inverter into the 12 volt socket, and then plug the TV and the Apple TV into the two outlets on the inverter, and Bob's your uncle. There you go. My, power, my uh, TV and my Apple TV are powered in my off-grid system, and it reality once I realized that um, that's really all I need there's plenty of other ways to make coffee I don't have to have a coffee maker plugged in uh, and then all the other essential systems the lights the uh, the furnace the water pump the refrigerator uh, basically everything else in the trailer runs off of the 12 volt DC system already except for the air conditioner and obviously my battery bank is not big enough to run the air conditioner anyway so at the inverter I just got this small inverter uh, to test out my batteries to see how long they would go and then once I got that small inverter I realized hey, that's really all I need I don't need to get a big elaborate system now I just go out on weekends mostly and a couple of big trips a couple times a year uh, I'm not full-time or anything like that if you're full-time I can see the the benefit of having um, The inverter a big enough inverter and a big enough battery bank to wire everything in the trailer so that you could use all the outlets uh, all the time and that would be fantastic, but um, for what I need, the cost to benefit ratio, this small inverter uh, does great. Okay, so we covered the batteries, which is how you store power. We covered the battery monitor, which is how you monitor how much power is left in the batteries so you know what you can do and you know if they're being charged. Uh, we covered the inverter, which converts the battery power, the 12 volt power into 110, 120 volt power if you wanna watch TV or things like that. Uh, the last thing in my setup that I'm gonna talk about is my generator. I have a Honda 2000 watt inverter generator. Um, nothing is fantastic. Hondas are a little bit more expensive. You can get a cheaper generator and I've heard there's some good ones out there. But for me, uh, when I was thinking about buying a generator, I wanted something that I knew was going to start every time I needed it to start and be reliable. And so I spent uh, the money for the Honda and it cost about a thousand dollars, which is, uh, it's the most expensive component to my system, but it's reliable and it does a good job. It charges the batteries up. Uh, if I do want to run, say, the coffee maker in the morning, or if I run, want to run the microwave, I can just run the generator and uh, power those things. And like I said, it also charges the batteries. Uh, the 2000 watt Honda generator will not run the air conditioner, but if you do want to run the air conditioner, you can get a bigger generator, like at least 3500 watts, or you can get two Honda 2000s, uh, I think they're 2200s now, and you can pair them together, and that will generate enough uh, wattage to run one air conditioner. All right, so this is a little bit embarrassing, but I'm gonna include it anyway. And I was just singing the praises of the Honda generator and how <laughs> how reliable it is. Uh, so I'm having a little bit of difficulty starting it here, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, I try to start it up once a month to keep uh, you know everything flowing in the carburetor and all that. Um, maybe it was six weeks or two months since the last time I started it, and so it was a very cold start. And also, 
uh, the choke lever is not labeled very well, so I can't ever remember which way the choke lever is supposed to be. Uh, so once I kind of got a couple of pulls on it and got the choke lever figured out, uh, it did fire up like a champ. A well, note on the <clears throat> flooded lead acid batteries, and I know I've mentioned this in other videos, but I can't uh, mention it enough because it's important. Uh, if you run your flooded lead acid battery below 50% charge, and you do that a couple times, even once, but a couple times especially, it's going to damage the battery, and the battery is no longer going to hold a charge, and it's going to basically not do what you need it to do. All right, so that wraps it up for my off-grid electrical system video. I hope you found the information useful. I think I talked about everything I wanted to talk about. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe uh, if you like the channel, and thanks for watching.